Hello YouTube and welcome back to Scruffy Tales. And in today's video we will be talking about some news concerning the Swedish made fighter jet Gripen. Right off the bat, uh, Swedish Armed Forces has uh, only a couple of days ago uh, had a massive budget increase that will uh, kick in in a year or two for now so Sweden will reach the 2% of GDP that is a requirement by NATO obviously this means a lot of cash to be thrown around to the army to the navy to the air force and what have you and as far as the air force is concerned this means the air force uh, will be able to follow through on uh, plans to upgrade as many of the existing Gripen C and D as possible uh, potentially building more of them and uh, most definitely build more Gripen E uh, Gripen Echo versions the latest most advanced version of the Gripen aircraft to date uh, Gripen E uh, Echo it's a slightly larger aircraft than previously uh, to accommodate more fuel so you can install more systems and it also I, I believe it allows it to carry um, two or three more missiles or something like that so it's a larger more powerful more dangerous uh, aircraft so um, yeah we're gonna be building more of those uh, to uh, secure Swedish airspace uh, and of course, if you build more Gripen, there will be more to uh, sell abroad or potentially give away to countries that might need them. Who knows, right? So that's uh, what's going on in Sweden. The Air Force is, uh, by the looks of it, uh, going to be expanding quite a bit in the coming years. Now it's uh, quite interesting. Uh, the Swedish government has asked of the uh, armed forces to, uh, you know, take a real good look at the possibility of uh, delivering Gripen fighter jets to Ukraine, and the armed forces are supposed to uh, report back to the government in November. Uh, will that happen? Uh, I'll return to that uh, in, in a moment. First off, there's also rumors that Ukraine wants to purchase 14 to 16 Gripen uh, from Sweden, um, which shouldn't be a problem. We'll come back to that later as well. And only recently, Ukrainian pilots and ground crew have finished their, uh, not their training, but you know, their uh, introduction to Gripen and the uh, surrounding systems uh, dealing with the Gripen, refueling, rearming, and fast turnarounds and stuff like that. Uh, so now uh, Ukraine and Sweden, they have data, they have a platform to lean back on when uh, evaluating how long it will take for Ukrainian pilots, Ukrainian ground crew to become proficient enough flying and operating Gripen in a combat zone. Okay, what about the Swedish government's uh, request to see if it's possible for Swedish Air Force to uh, lend Gripen to Ukraine? Uh, will they be taking them from this uh, active Swedish Air Force or will it be airframes that are currently in storage? Or uh, what are we talking about? I don't think uh, we're going to be giving away the aircraft that are currently being used by the Swedish Air Force simply because we need them. The Swedish Air Force is the main um, defensive line we have against foreign aggression. Sweden doesn't have a huge army anymore. That has been dismantled. So if the enemy ever reaches Swedish soil, we will be hard pressed to uh, hold them back if they come in full force, that is. 
so what are we left with in Sweden? Well, make damn sure that they can't cross the sea, the Baltic Sea, to reach Swedish soil. So that means we need a powerful air force because with a powerful air force we will deny the enemy a chance to fly across the Baltic Sea and we will deny the enemy a chance to sail across the Baltic Sea. Now combine that with stealth corvettes and Gotland class submarines. We are pretty safe at the moment. There's no way Russia can cross the Baltic Sea and reach Swedish mainland without losing a ton of ships. I mean, RBS-15 anti-ship missiles can be launched by land from uh, from ships and from uh, Grip and fighter jets, and they will sink anything uh, on the surface. So, uh, and so we need Grip and fighter jets, every one we've got for our own defense. So, I don't think that the Swedish Air Force will tell the government, "Sure, we have ten or twelve to spare." I don't think that's going to happen. They might have older ones in storage that they may consider shipping down to Ukraine. However, if you consider the uh, armed forces uh, receiving this massive budget and the Air Force intending to use their slice of the cake to upgrade all older Gripen to uh, state-of-the-art standards, I mean, they are probably going to be using any Gripen that is currently mothballed in a uh, underground mountains uh, storage facility somewhere, right? So I don't think any of those old airframes will be shipped to Ukraine either. I think Sweden will use those to expand on its own air force. But who knows, I could be wrong, they might, you know, make the decision that out of the 30 we have in storage, whatever that number is, they might send 8, 10, 12 down to Ukraine, you never know. Uh, another option is the Czech and Hungarian option. Uh, uh, Czech Republic and Hungary uh, are both flying uh, 14 Gripen. And the, well... The Hungarians aren't really on the table, I think that that's not an option, uh, dodgy bastards. And But the Czechs, the Czechs, they are planning on uh, uh, swapping out their Gripen for F-35s by the year of 2027. So it's still uh, in the works, it's not complete, but they are intending to, you know, give up. 14 Gripen and replace them. So potentially that might be the solution that uh, you speed things up with the Czechs so they get their hands on F-35s and then you have 14 Gripen that no one's using and oh my god look who's next door Ukraine here you go might happen. I personally think this is the most likely choice um, or rather the second likely choice. Because the most likely choice, the most likely option is was actually provided by Saab, uh, the company that produces Gripen a couple of days ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, when they, out of nowhere, completely out of left field, entered the chat room and said, hey, we got 14 airframes that no one has bought, that no one has paid for. They're just standing over there and waiting to be assembled as soon as someone fronts the cash for it. And now we have rumors of Ukraine wanting to purchase 14 to 16 Gripen. Saab has 14 ready to go, ready to be assembled. And you know, who knows? Uh, it also happens that Saab can produce, I don't know, what is it, 30 Gripen per year? And they're not producing that many at the moment that I know of. Uh, or that I know, as if I have inside information that I found via Google. And so maybe, it's potentially, if Ukraine uh, wants to 
purchase these 14 uh, Gripen from Saab, they might get pushed ahead in the production line and, uh, you know, because they kind of need it in a war. And so who knows? Six months, seven months, eight months from now, Ukraine might get these uh, Gripen that Saab just have standing around waiting to be assembled. And this is actually, it's actually very relevant. Uh, the Armed Forces has made a request to see if it is possible to launch low orbit satellites from Gripen fighter jets. Right, so they go up as fast as they can, as high up as they can, and then they launch a rocket that sends a satellite into low orbit. How cool is that? And weirdly enough, this happens just as Elon Musk is fucking up Ukraine's ability to operate drones deep in Russian occupied territory, right? We all heard how Starlink mysteriously shut down right uh, during uh, Ukraine's attempt to strike at the Russian fleet with drones, right? Just fucking up the entire operation. And I believe it was last year when uh, Ukraine went on the off offensive for the first time, Starlink shut down again, uh, denying Ukraine the opportunity to communicate and coordinate the troops and what have you. So with all that going on, all of a sudden Swedish Air Force, uh, Swedish Armed Forces wants a way to send up their own satellites into orbit to ensure that they are not reliant on some uh, foreign aid when it comes to uh, maintain, uh, securing communications between troops and between operators and drones. I don't know, what do you think? I, th I think it's, you know, uh, the Swedish Armed Forces have seen how vulnerable you are if you rely on uh, technology controlled by the private sector, right? So they want a way to, if things go dark, they can send out uh, communication satellites as needed to cover an area of Sweden or wherever Sweden is operating. And uh, that also leads to the next question. Are we only talking about communication satellites or will there be satellites that could potentially be used to disable or shut down enemy satellite networks, you know, taking out, maybe not destroying satellites, but disrupting satellites. If you have some cool new gadget satellite thing and you just ship it up and you, with that, cause a blackout for the enemy. Uh, where you yourself are operating in. You're not, so you're, uh, you know, disabling satellite networks rather than uh, uh, doing electronic warfare down in the atmosphere. Who knows? Well, that's all I have for you at the moment. Uh, to recap briefly, Sweden is increasing the military budget. The Air Force is going to be upgrading a bunch of aircraft and building a bunch of new high-tech ones. And uh, Ukraine really wants Gripen. Sweden is looking into how we can accommodate them. Uh, I doubt that the Swedish Air Force will uh, give up any of its own aircraft because Sweden really needs them. It's a vital, vital piece of the uh, Swedish uh, uh, defenses at the moment since we don't have a big army uh, what we're stuck with is making damn sure no one crosses the Baltic Sea to reach Swedish soil and for that we need Gripen so doubt that will happen and uh, what next and yes uh, satellites Gripen, Gripen for launching satellites into orbit that's just so cool and I am pretty confident it is because Sweden does not want to end up in the situation Ukraine is in, where they are reliant on a uh, billionaire 
fuckhead doing what he pleases with his own stuff. So, uh, so yeah. All in all, looking good for Sweden. And I hope, I hope uh, Saab, Sweden and Ukraine can uh, come to a mutual agreement to get those 14 airframes that Saab has assembled quickly and ahead of time and have them shipped down to Ukraine as soon as possible. And with that, have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.